Thank you, Chairwoman Napolitano, for holding this hearing, and thank you to our witnesses for being here to discuss EPA's initiatives under the Clean Water Act. In particular, I would like to acknowledge Assistant Administrator Dave Ross from EPA's Office of Water for taking the time to be here. And on the second panel, I'm glad to uh, be able to welcome Becky Keogh, who's the Secretary of Energy and Environment uh, from my home state of Arkansas. Water is obviously critical for life. We can't live without it, and I can't stress enough the importance of protecting our nation's water supply and quality, and how water policy shouldn't be about politics, but about applying the best science with the most common sense approach. Living in rural Arkansas or living anywhere in this country, you know that we all uh, rely on clean water uh, for drinking, for our homes, for our businesses and farms. And uh, we also rely on effective wastewater management and irrigation uh, to preserve the livelihoods of many people uh, who produce the food that feeds our country. Protecting our waters is absolutely critical to communities and ecosystems at home and all around the nation. We have made substantial progress over the past four and a half decades improving water quality in our nation. But I also understand that some challenging issues still remain. The most effective way to address these issues is through implementing effective and pragmatic environmental policies under the Clean Water Act that balance environmental, economic, and social outcomes. States need to be empowered and engaged as equal partners with the federal government in working to achieve these objectives. Neither the federal government nor a state should become overbearing and upset that balance. Maintaining the balanced federal-state partnership that Congress originally intended under the Clean Water Act is fundamental to achieving the objectives of the Act. This is cooperative federalism. It is critical that neither the federal government nor a state takes too heavy a handed approach. We can and must protect and restore America's waters and wetlands with effective and pragmatic policy and regulation that provides regulatory certainty and is devoid of armies of consultants and lawyers. Legal and policy decisions must be informed by good science, be clear and concise, and preserve states' traditional authorities. I look forward to hearing testimony today from the EPA and stakeholders on how we can strike a balance between regula regulatory clarity and the need for robust environmental protection of waters and wetlands, and also maintain the federal-state partnership that was envisioned under the Clean Water Act. And <clears throat> Madam Chairwoman, I ask unanimous consent that the written testimony be submitted on behalf of the following, uh, the U.S. Chamber of Commerce and the Chamber's Business Task Force on Water Policy Principles and the National Association of Home Builders and the American Forest and Paper Association. <laughs> 